Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, an amazing weekly data project in R from the R for Data Science online learning community. And as usual, I'm going to be screencasting this live, so if you're watching live, definitely say hi in the, um, in the chats. And uh, as, we go, as we're going, definitely um, share ideas you have, share questions you have, uh, I'm going to be sh uh, and um, giving ideas in terms of ways to explore the, the, uh, the data. I'm really excited to, uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the screencast is talking to people live. All right, so let's get to this week's uh, Tidy Tuesday data, and it's IKEA furniture. So this week, the... Um, Let's see, uh, I have been to Ikea many times, mostly the one, one a couple times the one in Brooklyn, a bunch of times the one in, in um, a bunch of times the one in Brooklyn, a couple times the one in New Jersey. I, um, I, re I, uh, I really kind of filled up my whole apartment with Ikea stuff both when I started uh, graduate school and then a little bit after I, uh, after I finished graduate school, moved to a new department. New apartment. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited to learn a little bit about Ikea. I know that Ikea has a lot of things that are um, that have interesting, uh, maybe hard to pronounce Swedish names. So if you join into these things to watch me try to pronounce things and fail, you're going to have a great time. All right, let's bring in this week's Tidy Tuesday data. I'm going to be doing it with the Tidy Tuesday R package. What is it called? PT uh, use Tidy template. It's the one. Creates a new RMD. Uh, I'm going to run this code. Libraries. I always do a couple of things. I always say library scales. I always say Theme set theme light. I like those. I'm going to load in today's data. I usually delete the rest and I say, let's look at the Tidy Tuesday data. Here it is, this, this Tidy Tuesday object. It only has one data set called IKEA. It looks, all right, we have 3,700 observations. It looks pretty neat. I'm going to be calling it, that is like, I don't need to do a lot of pre processing. Maybe I will later. Oh, I actually do see a bit of pre processing. There's this X1 column representing the row. I'm going to drop that. So here is my data set, uh -huh. and it's one table. All right, so I knew this, this was IKEA going in, but I didn't know anything about it, and it looks like it is, what is it? It's a uh, category, sofas, beds, chairs. Is this like a current set of items? Uh, let's take a look at this. The, I mean, um, so maybe it's a current set of furniture items. Web, oh, it's a web scraping project. That's cool. Okay, so I think it like takes this page, pulls out all the types of furniture, and uh, yeah, let's see, and has each of these categories of furniture. Uh, all right, the item, the name, the category, the price, and Saudi uh, Saudi uh, reals. Uh, I guess I'll probably have to translate this. That must this must have been uh, da um, downloaded from uh, maybe Saudi Arabia or another site, uh, another country uh, version, their version of that site. And then we learn a couple other things about it. Let's take a look at the data with capital V view. We say the name, there's our interesting Swedish names or, or Scandinavian names, category, price. Some might have had an old price. Let's see, all right, ah, before the discount, okay. Whether it's sellable online, uh, the, a link to it, oh, that's cool. So we might be doing, a, we could be doing a bit more web scraping if we, if we like, because we have the actual link to the, um, to the page. Is it available in other colors? Uh, short description, a designer, a depth, height, and width. We can find out the size of each IKEA item. Uh, is that that's in centimeters? Okay, great. All right. So what I'm going to start with is um, is anytime I see something like a category, I like to count the category and ask what are the most common ones. Looks like there are only 17 categories. That's helpful. Means I don't need to do a lot of lumping. And I can take this and say, all right, uh, n category. Geom I almost always make a sideways bar plot, and I neglected in that case the FCT reorder the category by n. Notice it's not reordered, and now it's ordered. Uh, now I can uh, polish this up a, bit, a little bit and say number of items uh, and category. I don't even need the category. I can just give it a blank Y and say title most common categories of IKEA items. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, all right. So then we we can um, uh, we got we got one graph under under our belts. So that's not that's not too interesting yet. I might be interested in how uh, category and price uh, relate. 
I'm going to stick just with price, not old price, but maybe later I'll pull in the, uh, the discounts. And let's actually look at the distribution of price by category. Uh, just like think about this, like there's such variety in some of these things, like children's furniture could be a tiny plastic chair, it could be a whole crib that's very expensive. So ex I expect a lot of variation. Even so, I have a feeling that, um, for instance, beds are going to be on average more expensive than chairs, room dividers might be less expensive. Uh, yeah, I have suspicion that some things are just going to be cheaper than others. Uh, let's find those. So if I want to, I'm interested in the average, but I'm also interested in the distribution, I probably want a box plot. I probably want to say price by category. And now I'm going to do the category and FCT reorder the category, not by N, but by the price. So it'll reorder it actually by the median price and geo and box plot. And check that out. Now I've got, uh, this version that shows the distribution of prices. Now notice that the prices can't go below zero, makes sense, but they can go pre they can go pretty high. That means I probably need a scale x log 10 to this long distribution and turn it into kind of a, a, of a clear shape where it goes from 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Uh, this I think is, this is definitely something almost all the time if you have prices, you want them to be on a log distribution. Okay, so wardrobes, the median wardrobe is very expensive, sofas and armchairs too, uh, less so TV and media furniture, but there's a lot of variation. Compared to children's furniture, furniture tends to be cheaper. Uh, cafe furniture is very specific. There might be very, relatively few items there. And that's something else we have the option to add to this, is we could say geom point. Uh, and just price category, uh, or even do a geom. So now I, I, I get one for each item, but that actually doesn't add that much. I might want geom jitter with a width of zero, but a height of 0.5. Uh, geom jitter allows these to be 0.5 is too much. Even 0.2 might be a lot. I'm, I'm kind of saying how thick are these streaks of points. Yeah, this kind of gets the idea of, okay, cafe furniture, there are relatively few items. And I can actually, uh, so geom jitter is handy for that. And I might still want to make it transparent. I might want to say alpha equals 0.5. Mm, 0.25. You kind of get across there, okay, there aren't a lot of things in cafe furniture. So that's a little, and there are a couple of outliers here. This is a little useful, but it's actually not my favorite way to show the data. What I think I might prefer to show the data is say how many items are in each category. Put that into the category. So actually say category is, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add count category name equals category total. That adds a column called category total with a number in each category. And now I add category equals, check this out. I like the glue package whenever I want to mix together a couple of strings uh, or a couple of uh, variables in, into a string. And I say glue, I want it to be category and then parentheses. Uh, category total, end parenthesis, check this out. Now I see, okay, wardrobe, sofas, armchairs. Yeah, this actually gets it across me better as you say, okay, cafe furniture is pretty, is not a lot of variation, but it's also only 26 items. Whereas tables and desks, yes, a lot of variation, but it kind of makes sense there are 612 uh, in that category. It also just like understands where should we focus the most attention and kind of get the idea, oh, sofas and armchairs has a lot. And uh, room dividers, not so many. Tables and desks has a lot. I kind of like this version, and I am going to uh, to put to polish it up just a little bit with some labels. So say price. Now, now we get to the step where this is actually price in Saudi reals. I I don't live in a country that uses Saudi reals. I use dollars. So conversion rate Saudi real to dollar. One, do, one Saudi real is 0.27 US dollars. Okay, so the um, so that means you need to multiply uh, this by 0.27 to get the, um, yep, I will multiply. So what I'll say is, uh, I'm actually gonna do that in, the, in the, the first step where I say IKEA is this. I'm gonna clean it and say price USD is this times, uh, that's the current conversion rate. Uh, we can see that if we look at, let's say one year has it, it hasn't changed that much, except for a bit of chaos. This could have been when the pandemic hit. Maybe there were a little. There's a little bit of. Uh, there was. I know some oil uh, prices uh, had a lot of variation. But mostly, if I say 0.27, is that right? 0.27, and then it's 
You'll say, yeah, I guess like 0.266. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be like fine. It's not gonna really be, be off by much. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the price in USDs, and I'm gonna say price USD is this times price. Okay, and now I can say I've added a column called price USD. I'm going to use that here, price USD, do the same here. And that means one more thing I'm going to do is, is in the scale x log 10, say labels equals dollar. And I can add uh, dollars here and say price USD. And now it kind of looks a little bit, a little bit prettier. And now I can say why, I don't need this, how much do items. All right. And that we get our um, our IKEA uh, our like distribution of prices in uh, in IKEA. Okay, so the um, uh, so that's distribution of price. Are there other ways we could share, show this data? I've got one. It's called a joy plot. Uh, it's like it used to be called the joy plot. These days they call it a ridge. It used to, uh, GG ridges. It was called the joy plot after a um an album uh, by Joy Division. I think Joy Division is a band, not the album, but I don't know music that had a kind of a similar pattern of. That had some similar pattern. We're using GG ridges. Let's do the same data, but let's do it as ridges. Geom, I think it's rid geom ridge line. Let's try this out. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. It's density ridges. That's the one. Okay. So the um, geome density ridges, we could look at this distribution with a little bit more information than a box plot, because it does show, for example, the TV and media furniture is bimodal. Check that out, it's got these kind of two lumps. Uh, so, so that's what, what a quote um, joy plot or ridge plot, this is what's useful about it is, it is as opposed to a box plot, as you can see, bimodality. Uh, it is a little harder to pick out the median, but you know, given the fact that there are bimodal distributions in here, nursery furniture, is bimodal, uh, I think I might stick with the ridge plot in this case. See, it's really had it's got 17 things, or been very hard to say do a faceted histogram and compare among them, but with ridges we can kind of get them on, all under one graph. I think this is a pretty neat graph. Your mileage may vary. It's uh, an answer from Jonathan, it's Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures uh, album. All right, cool. So the, um, oh, so question is, is it okay to be using uh, log scale and box plots. Yes, absolutely. Why, why is it good to use, uh, so first, why is it good to use log scale at all? Because this data isn't normally distributed. It's closer to log normally distributed, meaning the log of it is normal. For example, look at these densities. Now these aren't normal. For one thing, there aren't, isn't quite enough data to be sure if it's normal, but like it kind of goes up, has a peak, and it's roughly symmetrical. Compare that to if I didn't do it on a log scale, Notice now it's just got this really long stretch out here. Uh, now this is not this is not itself a very it's not a bad graph. It kind of gets across. Oh, okay, there are a few very expensive beds, things like that. But just realize that almost everything interesting is like does something and it might take it at prices. Like does it cost one hundred? Does it cost two hundred or something like that? The um and the question is uh, oh so um. Uh, the question is even with the asymmetry of the visual of the interquartile ranges, the answer is that that. If your data is roughly log normal, then the um, then the uh, I'm going to show the box plot version. Here it is. On a log scale, notice that that means that the interquartile uh, the pardon, interquartile ranges. That's the 25th and 75th percentile. They actually, those are fairly symmetrical, and that, that reflects something real about this data, is that it's very roughly log normal. Now, if it's bimodal, that's still, uh, the box plot is not quite right, and that's why I like the, the ridge lines. But the, um, but if your data is log, but box plots are well suited to, to normal data, which means if your data is log normal, you probably do want a, um, you probably do want the uh, the plot to be on a box on a uh, the scale to be on a box plot. Not everyone agrees on this. Some people think that it's really important not to have to like, explain. Notice that this goes from ten to hundred. This is three hundred. This is thirty. They they kind of like they think humans think better on a linear scale. Some people disagree. I like to keep the box plots kind of symmetric like this. But again, because we see a few that are bimodal, I do prefer this approach where we say, uh, where we have a ridge plot that say, oh, okay, TV and media furniture is kind of bimodal, uh, nursery furniture is kind of bimodal, 
and so on. That this this does work just a little bit more for me, but I do like it on the um, on the log scale. Okay, so that was looking a little bit at prices and um, uh, yeah, looking looking a little bit at prices and categories. Okay, fair point. And the um, uh, the next step is let's take a look at IKEA. Uh, did everything in, did everything in US dollars? Good on me. Okay, if you take a look at IKEA. Yes, is it sellable online? Is one? Does it come in wait, other colors? What is other colors? Is that no or yes? Okay, so I'm actually going to process that. Eh, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, filter or anything because we could um, we could ask questions about this distribution of prices with regard to other columns. For example, I just copy pasted that graph. I could just add in a fill equals other colors find out how it looks. Uh, if I do that, I'm probably gonna have to make it uh, transparent. So kind of get this idea of, okay, when things don't come in other colors, they're probably, a lot of things that, that are cheap don't come in other colors, what I'm getting from this. Like beds that come in only one color uh, are cheaper than beds that don't. So if I wanted to fit a model that predicted the price of, of an item, I could use its category. I could also use its um, uh, whether it comes in other colors. It's probably like a like a, a negative a negative signal. Let me try for a moment. If I try a geom box plot, how does this look? So you get similar information. See other colors, no, yes. Neither of these really get across the number that are in each category, and that's uh, an issue. But we do see that overall, uh, it's like not that far from 50-50. Uh, so it's probably going to be a useful uh, item. So we can just note, if we were building a, uh, if we were building a predictive model, we'd probably include both price, uh, no, no, of, of price, both category and other colors. What else could we include? Oh, let's look for a bunch at volume. I'm going to drop this uh, this graph. I think we know we we, we can just uh, I'll I'll throw it in just because why not? No, let me throw in. Here we go. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, so I'm really interested in volume. Ah, so uh, there's one more question. Ooh, this is, this is a, one, one more interesting question. Why do names refer to items that are included in multiple categories? Uh, it's like a data cleaning question. I hadn't actually looked at name yet, uh, and let's take a look at, at name. I asked some simple questions that are what we call a sanity check, which is, does each object appear once? Absolutely not. Some objects appear multiple times. Uh-oh, that's confusing. If I do name and category, Oh ho, there are 100 war and 11 wardrobes all named packs. So what? And then, all right, so this is a good question. These, I'm looking at this distribution of furniture, but I'm not looking at the fact that like the name has multiple variations. Uh, I bet they're different sizes. Uh, but they, now, and a fear is that, um, they, I wonder if they're, diff they're probably the same designer. No packs breaks up. For example, there's like two different types of packs, one, uh, packs wardrobes, one Ikea of Sweden, Ellen Johnson, another is Ellen Johnson, Ikea of Sweden. Um, that's not a real division, it just is breaking them up based on the order that it displays them. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling that, uh, yes, yeah, some of them are spelled slightly differently. I'm not going to break it down by designer because that seems to just be a data quality issue. Uh, just that you could that it can be written in many ways that still mean the same thing. But a reasonable question is like, yeah, what are the most common categories? And whenever I have a graph like this, what I usually want to do is do something like this. I want to say mutate name is FCP lump name uh, 20. So this is taking all the ones that are on the top 20 and putting them in another category. And now I'm going to visualize a category. Uh, nope, sorry, a N name, fill equals category, geom, call, and don't forget uh, cat, uh, name equals FCT reorder name by n, uh, name by n sum is actually pretty important. And I might want to do, see most of the categories are others, so that's not that useful, so I can say drop the others. 
Well, like most of the other names are other because there are a lot of rare names, but then a few common ones. Okay, so so, so here's an answer is that, uh, so this is a great question. Why do some names appear in multiple categories? The answer apparently is to be super confusing, just like their instructions are. But the, the uh, here, if I say the labs X is number of, um, yeah, number of items, Y is name of item. This is category. I probably want to reorder the category as well. Uh, so I can actually do like a, Uh, this is back, the way I just ordered it is backwards, so I can do, I think there's a few, but the simplest is to put a negative minus one or something. I kind of want to put the biggest one on top. That was wrong. I want to, <laughs> uh, I actually will keep it in this order because this way I want the biggest ones to go on the bottom, which are uh, bookcases and shelving units, and I'm going to reverse the legend and the, uh, the um, incantation for that is as follows. Scale, fill, discrete, guide, guide, legend, reverse equals true. Yeah, who could forget that? Because I, I kind of like the big one on top. I just like this, this ordering. Um, yeah, so what this is getting across is that like, oh, okay, there's like, uh, there's Besta has lots of bookcases, but also lots of cabinets and cupboards and lots of TV and media furniture. Wow, that is messy. Uh, that is, uh, that is something. Uh, I bet some of the, com the comparisons within category are based on volume. We're going to get to, like, maybe uh, different sizes, and we'll get to that later. But that is frustrating. I didn't know, I didn't know that, that they, re that they have, like, uh, let's actually, this is what I like to do, is I have to say, like, Besta Ikea, and try saying, like, okay, what is Besta? Like, well, it's always oh, it's a series. Okay. All right, so that's one thing we learned is best is what they call a storage system. Sure. So it's like we have combination. We have we have a system. We have doors. There's like, oh, no, this is Boaxel system. I take that back. But like, and there's TV benches. Okay. So that helps explain it a little bit. It's good to get that kind of, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's good to get that kind of an understanding. If you look at this and we say, okay, there's, there's color. There's also size. There's also, there's everything. All right. The, um, so that's, that's the reason. It is annoying that sometimes there are multiple uh, categories. Uh, that's why we can't, we can't trust name too much. If we had multiple data sets, we wouldn't join them by name, we'd join them by ID. But yeah, that, 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 gets, um, that gets us somewhere. Do they mention, do they have a color in the actual, like it said, they have an other colors, but they don't actually tell us what the, like is there a default color? Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, but they have a short description. Okay, so the short description is gonna be neat because, ah, okay, notice that you've got, yeah, check this out. A short, let's look at the short description. We could do, quote, text mining, but the truth is that this is not random data. This is not like, uh, this, is, this is not natural language. Uh, it's not necessarily structured, but we notice that often there is some text and then some numbers. Uh, and there's, there's text, often a comma, and then some numbers. Okay, the numbers... Do the numbers always come after the comma if they appear? I'm just trying to get like a sense. Okay, and, and I might want to do um, count short description sort equals true view. So there's often not a comma. And we, if the number is before the comma, it probably doesn't represent dimensions. It probably represents like four chairs. Um, it's not going to be, I can tell it's not going to be perfect. I saw one that I... That, that didn't work with this. But I think that if we like, if we split it on the, if we separated it on the comma, yeah, not all of them have a comma, but the comma like gives a little bit more information. But if we separate on the comma, it's probably gonna help us like break down, like there's some things that are very common before the comma and then some things afterward that are about the dimensions. Uh, now we are gonna do things on dimensions too, but let's do something with short description. Here's what's still. Uh, for a moment, I'm gonna just select the short description. Uh, notice that this it's got some white space around it. This is a cleaning step we might want to do way early in our cleaning. We should short description equals string trim is how we remove uh, sh uh, white uh, white space that is around the description. Now we say let's look at this that description. Uh, I did a, a string trim. That's nice, but I might actually want a string replace all uh, all multiple white space backslash backslash s is white space either spaces or tabs 
all white space uh, with a single space. Uh, how did I wait this one? Yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay, this is pretty good. Notice some of them are like height two height, some of them are height th times height. Uh, this isn't necessarily very structured. The, the names aren't structured, um, but it might not really matter because what I can do is I can say like. Uh, what I can do is I can say take this and separate it, separate short this which can separate this entire package into, oops, um, look at that, I forgot, I, I did this by left in a space at the front, so I want also a string trim. Oh, separate short description, I was starting to say that I separate into two, main description and rest. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, and if we say, um, there's a little bit we say extra equals fill from the right fill. Oh, nope. Not, I didn't actually, yeah, extra is merge and fill is right. That's how I say that I want, if there's nothing in here, I want like, uh, if there's nothing, yeah, if there's nothing in here, then I want, then I want um, it to be blank. That's fill equals right. If there's, um, if there, if there are more commas, just merge them into one string. So this ends up with a pretty useful approach. Check this out. Yeah, I notice I say sep equals the, the comma. Could I select the numbers in front of uh, CM? You bet I can. Uh, am I going to want like, I probably want like any combination of numbers, X, and this dash. So I can probably do like extract, I can do extract rest numbers. Anything that fits the pattern, um, a mix of number, this is a regular expression saying number dashes, oh, uh, I think I need, I think I need yeah, backslash, backslash, numbers, dashes, and x's, maybe capital X's too, just in case, plus cm, and put a capturing group around that. Check that out. Now I can grab out the numbers, uh, but I actually want, I don't want to remove it. So if I, uh, now, I'm not going to need to do much with this because we already have depth. Uh, so I, I probably don't need to, need, need to do it. We already have like the, the volume in another step in the, in the, in the equation, but I did want to show how we would go about picking the dimensions out of the, um, uh, out of the centimeters. Notice that there's sometimes other information in the rest. Uh, like there's some that say foldable or something like that. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to... Um, I don't know that I'm going to do anything with that. Uh, we can quickly check count rest sort equals true. Some of them say outdoor. I could throw, I could do like a filter for, for a thing that doesn't have the word outdoor. Uh, I can do a bunch of, I don't think it's going to be like that. I just don't think it's going to be all that important. Um, but it does mean that what I can do, numbers, Description. I'm gonna call it description cm. It's like because we know it comes before centimeters. Okay, I'm gonna drop the part where I selected this out and say, and here's my step where I parsed it. And now let's look at the main description. So that's the part I really want to pull out is what was before the comma. Okay, and what this tells us is I can throw in the category. This gives us a way to break down into subcategories. So I can say like. Tables and desks had so many. Um, tables and desks was, I think, one of the most common. If I get back to that bar plot, tables and desks was the most common. But I can now see is okay. I can break it down for table or table and four chairs, which looks like can be in the chairs category too. Okay. Aha. That's not a coincidence. Notice that it has eighty three, eighty three. I have suspicion that like, I have suspicion that. These two are like um, that. The, there are tables that, that are part of this, and chairs that are part of this, and they line up one to one. Uh, so that that well, makes sense. Uh, but yeah, then we have like we can break down our bookcases into shelving units, and this is useful because there are actually more shelving units than there are room dividers, for example. So the, these sub categories could be meaningful. Uh, and let me see what I'm going to do is, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unite the category in the main description. This is a tidy function is kind of similar to separate. Category uh, and description. 
unite category description and I'm going to unite them with like oops oh I see when I did separate short oh no it's got to be short description but notice that when I did separate I, I neglected to say remove equals false I I gotten rid of of, of it. And now it's a category and description. And main, so I'm going to do that on the, only the main description because I think because otherwise we have too much detail in here. And here's your most common ones. And we can ask questions like you, you know um uh, I think I think like yeah we could take this we could make um. What was saying? We we can make uh, uh, the we we could make the same graphs we did before this way, like compare tables to desks. You know why not? What I'm going to do is actually I'm going to look just within. Hmm. No, nah, I don't think I'm going to compare them between these. I think we can we can we've made a couple bar plots and and ridge plots up before. I think uh, that's looking a little bit at. at Category description. I hope it does help explain why the um, uh, why uh, the the um, what was in why I was explained why it was like shown this way that the um, uh, why there are so many different variations. They could have slightly different descriptions, even though they are the same like design. They're Besto or they're whatever same Scandinavian name. Okay, so I have been curious from the moment I opened this about volume. I've been curious about, I'm going to take the uh, item ID. Sometimes I select just so I can stare at these things, depth, height, width. Why am I interested in that? Because, um, yeah, because I'm interested in like, in let's say, uh, in, in here we have like bar furniture. I'm going to pull in the, wait, where's the name? Oh, I have a name, but not the short description. Uh, okay, so here I have like a bar table and four bar stools. That's why it doesn't have a depth, height, width. Uh, the bar table has a height and a width. It doesn't have a depth, which uh, surprised me. But in any case, like here we have a bar stool with back with a backrest, and we can actually say like um, it also confuses me. That this says one forty by eighty, and this says one hundred five by eighty. Mm, I don't know what that's about. Uh, oh, I might want price USD. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the volume. in cubic centimeters. For the ones that have all three, filter not is in a volume. The story is like, uh, and uh, let me see, a cubic centimeter is a milliliter, so I can actually put the volume in liters. That's right, liters of furniture. Liters of furniture. Uh, and, and yes, this bar stool takes up 300 liters of furniture. Uh, and the I can now do a range by descending volume liters. And check that out. That now, um, uh, now we can say the biggest item they have. Oh, wow. Pa this packs wardrobe. I bet if I Google this, it's going to be just quite big. You know, I think, no, I did not have this wardrobe for sure. That is an enormous wardrobe. It would take uh, many, many kilo, 13 kilo liters, I don't know, uh, like, uh, of uh, space, uh, though that includes some white, some empty space in the middle. And there's also U-shaped sofa, things like that. Uh, okay, so the, um, so the story is like wardrobes, sofas, and one real big corner So What is a sofa bed? Oh, God, I guess it folds out. Woof! These are some very high volume objects. So now I can say I, I can ask questions like, what are the biggest objects, or what is it? What is the, the distribution of the biggest objects? I'm kind of curious about that. In particular, I'm curious of. Um, uh, let's say I do. Yeah, let's do the exact same thing that I did before. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this add count category total. I'm going to move that into the clean step. That means I don't have to run it every time. See, I'm going to delete those there, throw it into here. That's great. But I'm, not, I'm probably going to have to redo it. 
Yeah, I did, I, I did that, and that's useful, but I actually need to redo it because we filtered out some ones at this step. Okay, and now what I would say is I would say, can we can we um, have, say, a, a plot of the, of the volume per object? And let's start with a box plot and go from there. Uh, and don't, no, it won't be, it won't, it will still be, here, I missed a couple steps. I missed a whole bunch of steps. I missed these two steps. Uh, I need to say, this is right, this is volume leaders. I need to change a label. <laughs> it's probably more realistic to do it in cubic meters, which is, uh, uh, let me see, a thousand times a thousand. Is that a, is that a let me see, a hundred times a hundred times a hundred? Uh, that's a, is that a million? I, I sure think that's a million, but uh, I'm a little, fra yeah. Uh, cube, I guess a cubic meter is a million. Um, let's do it in cubic meters. M3, so cubic meters. Depth, height, width divided by a million, uh, and change these. Volume of furniture in cubic meters. Okay, and what this? Let me see. Yeah. All right. What this shows is that like um is okay. Wardrobes are by far the biggest, and uh, we still we still reasonable to look at a at a. Log scale, though I think there are some outliers here that aren't good data, because um, this one is like less than a thousand. What what are the? Let me see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to this. I'm gonna say uh, type um, IKEA volume. And if I just arrange by descending volume meters cubed, yeah, this makes sense. But what if I go all the way to the bottom? Ah, so there are some that are just a leg, just a suspension rail, just a hook. Uh, those are really small. Uh, like even like we're talking literal like cubic centimeters and uh, like like it's a couple cubic centimeters. Things like a connector. Okay, so those are pretty. Uh, those are pretty silly, really. Whereas a children, this one is um, 0.1 cubic meters, but I guess it's it's plausible. This says it is 24 by 13 by 37 centimeters. That's very small, but you know I have a baby and they're small too. Uh, okay, so the um, and there's other ones that like laptop stuff. Okay, so the, the general idea is like anything way to the left. Here. All right, I'm actually going to go ahead and do a filter to say it must be at least one one thousandth of a cubic meter. Uh, yeah, for the SA filter, volume M3 greater than 0 0.01. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like this just, just a little bit more, just like kind of get rid of those hooks and connectors and things. Um, and this shows, for example, cafe furniture doesn't have much variation. They're all the same stuff. Uh, maybe they're the same, maybe they're the same, like ob different types of the same object, who knows. Uh, but there aren't a lot of them in any case. There's only 13. There's only six room dividers. There's only nine trolleys. Uh, okay. But the main thing we see is that, okay, sofas and armchairs on wardrobes are the biggest. Some armchairs are relatively small, uh, or sofas or armchairs are relatively small. And then the, this could just be like a leg or something like that that might be just not good data. And uh, yeah, you can really see why I do this on a log scale. It's worth understanding, okay, some things are greater than a cubic meter. Most things are like a tenth of a cubic meter and so, and, uh, and so on. Okay, so, the, um, so this shows how we, how we work in, uh, in, in volume. Uh, <laughs> I've got a really funny analysis, which is a question of what is the highest price per cubic meter? Nobody actually thinks this way, but, the, um, but it's something I'm really curious about is like, is uh, are you getting more space, more objects for your buck if you're getting a, war, a wardrobe than a chair? I don't have a lot of instinct. I suspect bar furniture is going to be a high price for each, but the um, 
Yeah, the and the word and and uh, I think there's in general going to be an association. It's good if we can do a predictive model, and I think we are. But I'm really curious. Just like, let's look at IKEA volume. Actually, let's let's start with price, and you know we've been doing box plots and distributions all day. Let's make a scatter plot and do a uh, volume at meters cubed by price USD geom point. We need two scales. We need a category color equals category. We probably need a category. Category is FCT lump. You're not going to do well on this if you have too many categories. And start with six. Okay, so in general, there's a relationship here, um, and I don't have yet. Yeah, I, I can't see, like, so in general, the larger objects are more, um, oh yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a GM smooth. See, is there, um, oh, and uh, I forgot a plus after that. So this, by the way, is why I use, another reason I use log scales, we notice the relationship is like fairly linear. Okay, and we notice that it's linear, but that there's also kind of a, um, yeah, it looks like the sofas and armchairs the price is a little higher for the same volume. Um, and the, uh, yeah, the word, the sofas and armchairs are the biggest, not the most expensive, but they're also, they're kind of like above. There's no such thing as a very cheap sofa, even the very small ones. Chest of drawers, drawer units, a little bit smaller. The general story is there may be, there's an impact of category, but there's also an impact of size. So if I was fitting something, I would, I would relate those two. And what is the, but uh, that doesn't answer our question, of what's the highest price per cubic meter? A dollar per cubic meter is price USD divided by volume M3. So last chance to get in your guesses. And it's um, it's an 86, oh, it, it is an $86 backrest that is tiny. Uh, is the highest density of price. So it's like, so this is a backrest that goes, I know it's thin, but it costs $86. So, so it's a low volume, so it costs $86. Uh, okay, and then there's also like, when you're all, uh, some of the other ones down, the ones that's a little bit bigger is say this day bed. Oh, I see, because it, so notice this one's more expensive because it, it folds up kind of neatly uh, in, and then the bed pulls out. So that means it's relatively low volume even for a fairly expensive um, one. So that's like, so if you're living in a, um, a really crowded uh, New York apartment, uh, you might want to get, you might want to look at the top of this list, but, but you have a lot of money to spend. You might say, well, I want to get the fanciest stuff, but I want the fit. Uh, so you might get the smallest ones. Uh, the lowest price is um, legs can be big but cheap. Oh, so I guess backrests are at the top and legs at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, and ten dollars per, cu per cubic meter compared to wow sixteen thousand. Uh, so I guess the the legs are just I guess probably just like a wooden leg. Sure, uh, that's kind of neat. And then like but the other is a wardrobe uh, that is. Let's see this wardrobe is a lot of space and not very expensive. Let's take a look at it. Okay, this, this actually makes a lot of sense. See, it's not like this, it takes up a lot of space, but it's not solid, it's made of plastic. It's just kind of, it's just a, a it's like a, a fabric stand. So it makes, um, like, uh, so this makes uh, sense to me to like, okay, these are things, folding chairs uh, don't take up, or I guess they maybe take up more space than the price shirt. I don't know. All right, so the general story is that that's our distribution. I don't have something systematic to say out of it, but it definitely was interesting to me. Okay, one, the last question, so two things. Before I forget, somebody suggested a, a new, this is a, an interlude. I was doing this string trim, but somebody suggested a function I've never used before, which is string squish. I think I'm gonna learn something new. I often learn something new in these. String squish remove, also reduces remediated white space inside a string. Fantastic. This is exactly the thing that I wanted. Look at me doing this whole thing, and there's string squish. I don't know when this showed up, but I had never heard of it. Uh, and now if I look at uh, IKEA, 
uh, or now if I look at my select short description, yeah, it looks great. Oh yes, it's removed the white space, removed the everything. Thank you for string uh, uh, for uh, wood wood spot for a string squish. Okay, uh, there's one more question about how how price relates to designer. I think that's definitely worth worth asking. It's I'm actually going to put it in the category of the early ones. Uh, well, let me let me count designer. But actually, I don't just want um, it's. Let me use just the regular IKEA data set. You know, let's. Oh, did I drop designer in IKEA? Oh, I guess I did. Hmm. Anyway, the um the I can count designer. I'm not just not just in the number, but the number of different products that each produces. If um so if I if I so I actually might want to say group by designer. Summarize n items n n names and distinct name. See uh and arrange descending. There's some uh, data quality problems here. It looks like some things that are not actually designers. Uh, and things. So here's an example. Uh, IKEA of Sweden has cited 828 different items, but that have 167 names. And I might also be interested in N categories. Uh, okay, so there are a couple of top designers. So there, there's IKEA of Sweden, which I guess is like the general designer. And then there's a handful of people that designed you know, around 100 or whatever, a couple different names, 100 different items. These may be informative. Uh, the fact that none of them have designed more than, so, hmm. Because thinking when I do, a problem when I do a predictive model, a problem when I do a predictive model is going to be that if, that if I do cross valid, that, that I have like all these observations within one single designer. Uh, sorry, not, I said designer. I have all these observations within one single name. Earlier I made this graph where I saw that, for example, we have all these bestas that are uh, like the same bookcase and shelving the same sofa, the same TV media, media is like the same kind of TV media furniture. And they probably indicate something about the price, but it also has, it also like has a lot of information about it. Now, what I, why am I th thinking about this? Because if I do cross-validate, if you do cross-validation, uh, that's where you say you fit your data on 90%, uh, you fit your model on 90%, and then you test it on the other 10%. Uh, you're going to have a problem where you'll have BESTA in the training and the test set, uh, and and the prices are probably similar, and the relationship between the price and the the um, the size is probably very similar. You're probably going to have to do some kind of stratified sampling. In the 10 minutes I have left, I don't think I'm going to fit a, fa fit a particularly complicated machine learning model, um, uh, but it's just something that I, I noticed, and the yeah, designer is going to get kind of complicated too. Basically, like, designer... Item category all kind of fit together in a way that's not uh, that, that is not independent. A lot of these are like different versions of the same item. So that's just a thought when we, if we if, if you're going to fit a, a machine learning model based on this. Okay. So the um so what I'm going to do instead I'm going to fit a fairly simple model on um on just a couple of things. I'm going to look at category and I'm going to look at volume. Yes, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to take the IKEA volume. I'm going to look at those. I'm going to look at, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to include, I can drop this. I can, I can include everything in IKEA volume. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything. Here we go. The, um, I'm going to ask the question, how does, let's see, volume. So we see that, uh, how do volume and, um, uh, oh, so let me, let me show that graph one more time. I have this. Volume to, nope. That's the one. Notice we have volume, we have category, we have does it appear in other colors. Uh, those are the, uh, and we, we have things like design it, but again, they're very sparse. So I'm going to start by actually saying, let's fit a model that says, let's predict our price USD by um, the volume M3. But very importantly, I'm going to predict the log of the price. I like to use log 2. It's a little more interpretable. I can say for each doubling of the volume. Uh, oh, and data equals dot and family. Oh, no, I did GLM, but there's actually a linear model. This is saying um, I'm fitting like a line just like this. So what this is saying, if I were going to predict the price of something based on nothing but the volume, which... Sure. I would say every doubling, of, I start with um, 
uh, a, a price of eight, and, oh, uh, sorry, a price of two to the power of eight. Is that right? What am I doing wrong here? Log of price explained by log of volume. Yeah, the, start with this price and then, oh, I see, yes. Then for a one, one meter, uh, this, what this is saying is that a one square meter object would cost 326. Every doubling will, inc will um, increase, the, will, will, uh, a, a volume will increase it on a log scale by 0 0.8. Every halving will, will decrease by some amount. This is communicating some, so, th so what we're doing is we're fitting a linear model on a log log scale. Uh, but I don't just want that. I also want to include the category. And this gives me a lot more information, but also a lot of statistical complication. So what this is saying now is that, okay, I'm sure there's a relationship between volume, and then there's some that I think are higher than, other, than, than others and some that are lower. A problem that this run in, runs into is higher or lower with respect to what? Uh, and, the, and the answer here is this, is, this, isn't, um, this isn't ideal, that we actually have, um, that it'll be whatever is first alphabetically. Hey, what is first alphabetically? If I take um, IKEA volume and count category, it's bar furniture, which only has 24. That's why a lot of these aren't statistically significant. They're not relative to any, they're, they're, um, they're not relative to, they're relative to something that we have very little information about. I'm going to turn, do them all relative to, let's say, I want something that is very, so this story is, if I want to say, is this category statistically more, um, uh, more expensive than others? I'm going to want to pick a category that's both common and around the middle. Uh, so for example, I could take this, uh, remember I did this exact analysis earlier where I said, how much do items each category cost? I don't, I could pick sofas and armchairs uh, but they're, because they're common, but they're one of the most expensive. I probably want tables or, and desks or chairs. I'll do tables and desks is the most common. It is kind of in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, are things more or less expensive than tables and, and uh, desks? The way that I handle that is I say category is FCT reorder category <clears throat> by, uh, oh, sorry, I said reorder, but I actually wanted re-level tables and desks. And now I'm asking each of them relative to tables and desks. Now I learn, okay, bar furniture, looks like it's about the same. That makes sense. Notice all that air overlap between tables, desk, and this. Whereas like some of them do have a significant p-value. I'm getting the p-value based on this column. But this is not a good way for me to look through this. I want a coefficient plot. Like what am I doing here? I'm looking at this whole setup. We've done a coefficient plots a couple more times, a couple previous times. So. My last five, I'm going to be here about five more minutes, and I'm going to use the broom package. Broom takes this and turns it into a kibble, for instead of that whole object that we were examining a second ago. That makes it a lot easier to filter. Term is not equal to intercept. I don't want the intercept in my um, visualization. And then uh, turn it into a estimate, term, geom, point, a coefficient plot. It's not a great coefficient plot yet because it's alphabetical uh, for starters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mutate uh, terms FCT reorder term by estimate. Now they're ordered. And now do geom uh, error bar h x min. This is what I'm going to call a tie fighter plot if you're a fan of Star Wars. Conf dot low x max is conf dot high to add confidence intervals. Do you notice that I forgot one when I did tidy? Do conf.int equals true. That's oop. X max, not y max. There we go. Here's our TIE Fighter plot. Uh, because these kind of look like TIE Fighter spaceships in Star Wars. Though if I want to drop it, I can say height. If I want to make it look a little bit less like a TIE Fighter, I can do this. Um, now, uh, and I'll say one more thing. I'll say geom error, oh, geom v line. X intercept is zero, color is red, line type LTY is two, which means dot, which is dashed. Uh, and this gives a question of like, um, rel uh, 
impact on price to a one cubic well relative to a to a two tables and desks. It's kind of like this way of um, of visualizing it. So the the question then is like, okay, some of them are more expensive, some of them are less expensive, uh, and this does make uh, some sense. So like, so we can say, okay, bookcases and shelving units tend to be cheap, beds tend to be large, given, and that that's conditional on the on the log of the um, square volume. I might want to say uh, term is if else. Oh, I'll leave this here. I'll say if the term is log two volume. M3, give it something special that is more interpretable, and say volume, volume, item, item volume, double, so the idea is like this is the effect of doubling the, um, the, the item's volume, and, oh, and the other, otherwise keep it as term. Not perfectly like, uh, and I, I might also want to say term is string remove term, uh, I can remove category when it's at the start of the string. So here we go. And now I can say a coefficient plot that, let, that, that uh, uh, how can you estimate price from category and volume? So this is a coefficient plot. Made a lot of these before, and it kind of gets the idea, okay, you start with, if it's a table and desk, you start here, and then you, um, you, you, uh, beds, uh, then, then you add uh, this effect for each doubling of the item volume, which would mean most object items are smaller than a meter squared, so you, you cheapen them. Uh, so you, you shrink from them from the, from the intercept. And then you say, well, what is the category? If it's bed, it's probably unusually expensive for its volume. If it's a bookcase and shelving unit or children's furniture, it's probably unusually inexpensive for its uh, for its volume. So what? So a better way of phrasing this is inexpensive to volume. So it's another way to think about this. So this is a way to combine those two effect, those two questions of like how does volume relate to category, and how does um, yeah and and how does uh, how does volume relate to price and how, how to price and how does category relate to price and combine them into one linear model right here. Okay, let's review everything we went through today. The um, I did a little bit of cleaning of the data, and then I did uh, like to, like turning the price in reals into into U.S. dollars, and then I said, okay, well we have tables, desks, bookshelves, chairs. I remember my first uh, IKEA bed. I remember my um, I had a, I love love the IKEA bookshelves. I had one in two for two different apartments. Uh, some TV furniture from IKEA. Yep, look at all. We looked at this stuff, reminisced, and then we said, how much do each of them cost? Well, wardrobes and sofas are expensive. Children's furniture, TV, media furniture are less expensive. We discovered that with a geom uh, a rich plot, we were able to uh, see that some of them were bimodal. So we were able to actually see like like uh, that maybe a box plot was removing some of the complexity. We did something similar for um, we even saw oh I completely forgot in this one to include the other colors. Wow, let's run that one more time. Other colors, yes. Look at that. Well, I, might, I could replace that, but. Uh, yeah, so having other colors is still a positive impact on price. That makes price higher. Uh, I totally, I added a note to that. Oop, look at me adding a note and then forgetting about it. Uh, but yeah, that was the other colors one. Uh, then we went about saying, um, we had a great question, which was, how does the, why does the name of item appear across multiple categories? And we discovered by Googling a couple examples, it looks like some of these occur in sets that go across multiple categories. And we saw some of the, the IKEA names that are really, um, uh, that are really common. We looked a little bit by uh, how much space do items take up is how I would, I would, I would describe this one. And say wardrobes take up a lot of space, tables and uh, desks relatively little. And we even asked questions about like price per cubic uh, per cubic meter. And saw there's a clear relationship: bigger items, more expensive; 
Not surprising, uh, but the category plays a role on top of that as well. And finally, we turned that into a linear model. We tried saying, okay, the bigger the object, the more expensive it is, but there's, a, there's an extra premium for beds, smaller for room dividers, uh, and, uh, and, and so on. Higher if, it's other, higher if it's other colors. All right, so that was explained to my key data. If I had had longer, I probably would have gone a little bit more into what the how the predictive model would have worked given that there are multiple versions of each item, like multiple sizes of each item. That probably is going to make us um, it's going to make us look a little more accurate than we'd otherwise be because we because if we're estimating the size of a, the, the price of a new object, we can basically say, well, look at the uh, look at the other ones in that type in that name and just extrapolate based on their prices. But in fact, that's a pretty reasonable idea is we could ask a question like, um, we could ask a question like if you add a new item of furniture to this set that is, in, that is this particular size, how much would you expect it to cost? It's kind of interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, we looked at, at um, generally, yeah, looked at what the distribution of furniture was. If we had more time, I probably would also have um, maybe done a bit of web scrape with these URLs. Lots of things. That we could, I could have compared the heights and the, I looked only at volume, we could have done the, some of the heights and the widths and the depths. Uh, are some types of this, are some kinds of furniture unusually tall or unusually wide and unusually deep? Uh, or for that matter, separate out the height, width, and depth in this model. Okay, that was all, that was all really um, uh, exciting. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting, it's a very important day uh, of, uh, in recent American history. And um, I hope any U.S. citizens got a chance to vote. I did this morning, and um, it's, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I got to take this this hour break and explore this IKEA furniture with you. So this will be up on GitHub. I uh, uh, don't forget if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed this, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see the future um, uh, future videos. I I hope you had a lot of fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next week.